Have you ever found yourself in a corporate meeting, surrounded by colleagues throwing around phrases that sound like they belong in a secret code book? Welcome to the world of corporate jargon, where things like thinking outside the box and touching base are very commonplace and you hear them all the time. If you've ever felt a bit lost in this sea of buzzwords, acronyms, catchphrases, you're not alone. In today's video, we are diving into 20 of those phrases and vocabularies that are often used in professional settings and business meetings. Hi, my name is Catherine and I am a business English teacher. I work with intermediate to advanced level students. I not only want to help you improve your English, but improve your English for the workplace so that you can reach that next step in your career. Achieve that promotion. Obtain that goal that you are working towards. So hit that subscribe button if you feel a bit lost or just need a helping hand through the world of native English speakers in the workplace. I also have a very exciting announcement to share with you all. Although I have been an English teacher for four years and have worked in marketing for five years prior to that, only in the last couple of months have I decided to create and launch my own teaching website. I have worked so hard on this, it's taken a lot of time and energy, but it is finally ready to launch and for you to look at. There are group lessons on there, individual one-on-one -on -one lessons with myself, self-study courses that you can download and do in your free time. I'm constantly adding and updating and improving the website but if you want to go and have a look, you want to take your English to the next level, or you're just interested to learn a bit more about me as a teacher and my background, go and take a look and feel free to contact me with any questions you have. This is something I'm very excited about. It's been a long time coming that I have my own teaching website. I've always worked for other people. So finally, I have a bit more control of my own calendar and schedule, and I'm very happy that I can share it with you. So without much further ado, let's get into the corporate jargon. I will split this video into two sections. The first will be vocabulary you will probably hear in meetings and in the office. And the second section will be phrases and idioms. So starting off our vocabulary, we have diversify diversify. Now this is to start or to include different types of things. So maybe your business only offers one product and you decide you need to diversify, expand, include more products to attract a different customer, a different audience. If a business diversifies, it's offering more than it originally did. People are advised to diversify their stocks in order to reduce risk. Let's say as an English teacher, I only teach English and I want to diversify. I could do that by adding group lessons or courses for my students. Let's say Apple wants to diversify. We all know the iPhone. They diversified by introducing AirPods, the Apple Watch, adding more products that their customers can purchase and buy. Synergy. Synergy. Now this one is thrown around a lot and it's so funny because it's just a synonym for working together well. But people love to use synergy because it sounds professional and it sounds so much more impactful. So the official meaning is the combined impact of a group working better than an individual doing that work by themselves or working separately. An example, teamwork at its best results in a synergy that can be very productive. All that means is teamwork where people are working together well results in good outcomes, positive outcomes, productive outcomes. You must choose healthy foods and a healthy lifestyle to maintain the synergy of a healthy body. Again, it just means if you only ate healthy but didn't exercise, or you only exercise but didn't eat healthily, the synergy is off. It's not working well together, but together they work well and you can achieve your fitness goals, your healthy lifestyle goals. Metric. Now, metrics refers to numbers, figures, data, quantifiable measures. 
So something you can measure with numbers. So you wouldn't just swap the word numbers for metrics because that doesn't quite work. I couldn't say the total metrics of people that came into our office today are. That doesn't make sense. But the measurement we use to measure the amount of people that came into the office is a metric. So an example, do you have any metrics on the rate of usage for the service. So what I'm asking for is a percentage, a ratio of how many people use the service. Another good example is when you compare figures to previous figures. So this year's sales are 10% up. Last year's sales were 5% up. So by comparing them, we have an idea, a measurement of how much our business is growing. This would be considered a metric. So if you are ever asked for metrics or are listening to someone giving metrics, they just mean data and figures and percentages that show something, demonstrate something. Competency. Now, competency is just another way of saying something you're good at, a strength. If you're trying to sell something to a client, you may say our main competencies, our core competencies are or this business can benefit you because we are competent in these areas. We have strengths, we have experience, we have knowledge in these areas. And you often hear this in an interview. An interviewer will ask you, what are your main competencies or your core competencies? And it just means your strengths, the things you're good at. Objectives. Objectives. This is another way of saying aims, targets, goals. And these can be long-term, objectives. The objective of the business is to reduce the cost of living by introducing cheaper electricity or to reduce the amount of plastic in the world by using recycled products. The long-term objective or the short-term objective. What are your objectives today? My objectives are to get this video completed and edited and uploaded and I actually have some DIY housework that I have to do. So as soon as I finish this video, I need to go and buy some tools to be able to do that. Your objectives can be personal, short term, long term, professional. It's just another word for goals, targets or aims. And you often see this in English language courses or lessons. What are your objectives for taking this course? The objectives for these lessons are to improve your English, your pronunciation, etc, etc. Empower. Empower. Now this can be used in your personal life as well as your professional life because empowering someone is giving them the resources, the materials they need to be able to do something on their own. It's like teaching them to be able to manage without your help. So my objectives for these English videos are to empower my students to go out there and apply for jobs, go for promotions, achieve their career goals with the confidence and knowledge of English language in the workplace. Maybe a manager has taught you how to approach a customer. They are empowering you to go forwards and speak to that customer with new knowledge. It's giving someone the knowledge they need to be able to do that again in the future without you. Teaching them, giving them the confidence, motivating them. It's all of those things combined. Traction. Now traction is another word for movement and this can be an increase or a decreased movement. So when we talk about sales figures or numbers, we would use the word traction. Gaining traction is an increase in sales figures and losing traction is a decrease in the sales figures. The traction is the movement and so the gaining is increasing and the losing is decreasing. When the company first started, they gained a lot of traction, but as we are seeing as time goes on, they are losing that same traction and not so many people are buying their product. In the beginning, we lost a lot of traction because people didn't understand our strategy, our concept. But as they've started to understand, as the market has started to understand us, we are gaining traction. We are seeing an improvement, an increase in sales figures. Bandwidth. 
Now, bandwidth was originally used to talk about the internet, the capacity of the internet. A storage bandwidth is how much it can hold, how much it can store, the capacity of it. But we have changed this word to now mean our capacity, our ability. And it just means exactly that. I do or don't have the ability or capacity to do what you're asking me. But by using the word bandwidth, it sounds more professional. So let me give you an example. You ask me if you can have 10 lessons a month in the following month, in the upcoming month. And I say, I don't have time to do that at the moment. Or I could say, unfortunately, I don't have the bandwidth to teach 10 lessons a month this month. Now, this is a very strange example because typically I would never say that. It's too professional, it's too corporate for talking to a student. But just as an example, it sounds more professional. It doesn't sound like I have no time or I'm refusing to do something, but it sounds like my capacity is full and I can no longer do any more. A better example, a client reaches out and they want something done for half the price. You don't want to do it for half the price, but instead of telling them that, you can say, unfortunately, the company at the moment doesn't have the bandwidth to complete what you are asking from us. We will be in contact when we have more availability. So you're not telling the client, I'm not doing that for half the price, that's ridiculous. But you're just saying something is stopping us completing this at the moment. We don't have the ability or capacity to go forward with this. Benchmark, benchmark. Now this is another way of saying like the target or the standard of something. And this can be something you've previously done or something you aim to achieve, something you want to achieve. So let's talk about it in terms of sales. Maybe $10,000 worth of sales a day is the benchmark, is the standard, is what you're trying to achieve. So you would say our benchmark is $10,000 a day. Or let's say you're a graphic designer and you've worked on a project that you're really proud of, you completed it perfectly, the client was very happy with what you had done, you could say that was the benchmark. The project you did for client A was your benchmark product. So every project you do after that needs to hit that same amount of satisfaction. Of course, it's not going to happen every time because we can't predict the future but you can have a benchmark and your benchmark is what you aim for. And our last vocabulary is protocol. Protocol. This is just a professional way to say rules and regulations. And the protocol is something you must follow every time something happens. Typically, if you go outside of this protocol, there will be a problem within the business. Every business will have its own set of protocols, set of rules and regulations. No two businesses will have the same. But let's, let me give you a really realistic example. If you are sick, if you are ill, and you cannot go to work that day, there will be in your contract the protocol that you need to do, you need to complete in order to take that sick day. So it might say you have to call the day before, an hour before, and then once you return to work, you need to provide a doctor's note. Or it might just be send a message to the group WhatsApp, the group chat, letting them know you won't be in. Could be as simple as that. But the protocol is something you have to follow every single time. And if you don't, you could be in trouble. There are protocols for dealing with customer complaints, dealing with high value clients, sending emails, and there will be a different protocol for every employee. So the employees at the bottom level, mid level, senior level, they will all have certain protocols they have to follow. Now let's move on to our phrases and idioms. I know a lot of people love the phrases and idioms. And whenever I do a, a phrasal verb video, an idiom video, it gets a lot of views. So I'm sure a lot of you will enjoy this section. Some of these are idioms. Some are just phrases that we use in the English language. Our first one, put in place. Now, actually, there's, there's two ways you can use this. Put in place and put in its place. Put something in its place. So let's 
hold that one for a second and focus on put in place. So to put something in place is to start something that didn't already exist. Let's say, for example, you work for a company that wants to put remote working in place. So they never used to offer remote working, but they are now. They are putting it in place. Or maybe your office hours used to be nine until six and they are putting in place these new hours, eight until five. It's to introduce something, start something, set up something that wasn't there before. We need to put something in place to make sure everyone is at work on time. We need to put something in place to make sure our remote workers are working to the best of their ability. Now, put it in its place, put something in its place, is to put something where it belongs. Put it back, put it on the shelf, put it where it belongs. So if I was to say to you, can you put the laptop in its place? I don't mean set up the laptop, start the laptop, I mean put it where it belongs, maybe on my desk or you have a special laptop house in your office. Ducks in a row, ducks in a row. Now imagine a mummy duck with all her baby ducks following along. They go in a line, they're all going the same direction. They don't all have the same plan, but they're definitely all following the same direction, the same mother duck. So when we talk about having our ducks in a row, what we are saying is we are all following the same direction. Everything's in line to be successful. Nothing's out of line. We don't have any ducks swimming off the opposite direction. Everything is going to plan. So in a business setting, we might say, I'm going to organize a meeting on Monday to make sure we have all our ducks in a row. We're all on the same path. We all have the same vision. We're all working together to achieve the same thing. In a personal way, I might say, at the moment, I have a lot of students. I'm exercising every day. I'm drinking a lot of water. I'm getting enough sleep. I feel like all my ducks are in a row. I feel like all the aspects of my life are going the same direction, heading the same way in order for me to be successful. The bottom line, the bottom line, this is quite a nice one for you to remember, note down and remember, because this is a way you can lead the conversation back to where you want it to go. Often in meetings, especially online meetings, people start talking about all sorts of topics often not related to what you need to talk about and it can waste a lot of your time. If you were to say something like, the bottom line is we need to find more leads, find more clients and improve our sales figures for the next quarter. What you're saying is everything we talked about is great, but the summary, what I want you to focus on, the main point, the key takeaway is sales figures and new clients, new leads. Maybe your team is having an argument about if they should do it this way or if they should do it this way and you say to them, the bottom line is we need to find a solution. It doesn't matter how we find that solution. We just need to find a solution before Friday. In summary, the key point, the main takeaway, what I want everyone to remember from this conversation. Table the conversation table the conversation. Now, again, if you are in that scenario where lots of people are talking about different things and there's lots of different topics happening and the leader, the presenter of the meeting or the person taking the minutes of the meeting says, let's table this conversation and focus on. What they are saying is, yes, it's important what you're saying. Yes, we need to discuss it, but now is not the time or place. This is something we can put on hold. We can save for next time. Right now, our focus is this and whatever it may be. Let's table the conversation and get back to the main task, which is trying to figure out how we can solve this problem. And we'll come back to that point that you just made at the end. Or let's table the conversation for Monday's meeting because I know the CEO will be there on Monday and I would really appreciate his opinion on this matter. Let's table the conversation until we've heard back from the client. There's no point us making a decision until the client has given us their final feedback. Hold that thought. 
hold that conversation. We will discuss it at a later point. Skill stacking. Skill stacking. Now, actually, I have someone on YouTube to thank for this. Someone was in my comments telling me about how they're trying to improve their English. And I noticed they use the phrase skill stacking. And this was very interesting to me because I've personally never used this phrase, but I've heard it a lot. I think you can figure out what it means from the two words, skills and stacking. So stacking is to build something, place things on top of each other. So they are in a tower, they are stacked on top of each other. So if you are stacking skills, you are learning skills that you can put on top of each other to improve your overall impression when you go to an interview, when you talk to someone at a networking event. You're improving what you have to offer them. So a simple example, as an English teacher, if I can speak two or three languages, I am more impressive to my students because I can explain something in their own language as well as in English. Personally, I think if you speak English and Spanish, you can talk to anyone in the world. They are the most widely spoken languages, so by learning Spanish, I would be skill stacking. Let's give you another example. Let's say someone has a background in graphic design, but they also have a passion for social media. They decide to combine these skills by learning about digital marketing, content creation, and social media marketing. They study the best practices for creating visually appealing content and engaging graphics and they use their graphic design skills and their newly found skills of marketing to build fantastic social media campaigns that reach a huge audience. This is an example of skill stacking. They are taking something they already know how to do and learning a new skill so that they can add the two together. I used a phrase in that example, best practices, which leads us on to our next phrase, best practices. Now the best practices, every business will have a different kind of best practice, a different version of what they consider their best practice. What does it mean? Well, a best practice is similar to protocol. It's not necessarily rules or regulations, but it's a set of things that someone has done before and they suggest that you follow this example every time in order to achieve a positive outcome. So let's say you work in customer service and you get a customer complaint. There will be a best practice for you to follow. Now, of course, best practices are just there as an example. Not every customer will have the same complaint or the same reaction. So you need to change these in order to suit that customer. But the best practice might be, for example, only offer a refund once you've gone through every other option. Or let's take a really simple example, cleaning your house. Best practice for cleaning your house is brushing, sweeping before you mop. If you mop, when there's dust and dirt all over the floor, you're just pushing that dust and dirt all around your house. So the best practice is not a rule, it's not a protocol, but it's kind of like the, the best way to do something, the most logical way to do something. Crunch the numbers, crunch the numbers. This sounds fantastic, I love saying this. Crunch the numbers just means do the maths. Do the maths. So if you give me a huge list of data and I say, perfect, thank you, let me crunch the numbers and get back to you. What I'm saying is let me look through this list of numbers, work out what I need to work out, maybe the percentage, the total amount, the profit made, the taxes we need to pay and get back to you with that number. People often use this to say, I have the numbers but I haven't yet done the maths. I haven't yet figured out what the numbers mean. So crunching the numbers is figuring out what the numbers mean. Win-win, a win-win situation. Now think of any game you play. There's always a winner and a loser. Or any sport, there's always a first and a second place. Some people say second is just as good as first. Some people say, you know, it's a winner and a loser. But in a win-win situation, you never have a loser everyone wins. So I'll give you an example. If you are an influencer, a content creator, and someone wants you to create a post for them for free, 
Initially, that doesn't sound very positive for you because you're not getting paid for your time. But maybe the people asking you to make content for them are a huge platform and everyone has heard of them. So by you making content for them, you are exposed to so many other people and so many other clients and you get 10 or 12, 15 clients contacting you after you've created that post. This is a win-win situation. The company gets a free promotion of their business and you get even more clients than you had in the beginning. A win-win situation. Both parties, both people, both groups win or get something positive from this situation. Note, it's only a win-win situation if both parties are happy with what they are being offered. If I tell you this is a win-win situation but you don't actually feel happy with what I'm offering, of course it's not a win for you. So it wouldn't be a win-win situation. I can tell you it is but you don't feel like it's a win-win situation. Drill down, drill down. Now think of a drill and think of when you make a hole in wood or you're building something in your home, putting together furniture. When you drill down into that hole, you're getting deeper, you're getting closer to your goal. So drilling down in a figurative sense, in a business sense, is finding out more, getting closer, getting more detail. If something's failed, we tried something, we created a marketing strategy and it did not work, it failed, we got no new leads, no new clients and we made no sales from our marketing strategy, I can ask my team, okay, it failed, we can't do anything about that, but let's drill down into the reason why it failed. Find out exactly what happened, find out the details. What did we do wrong? What can we do better next time? So if you're ever asked to drill down on something, it means give more details, find out more details. And our last one today, I'm going to give you a chance to guess what this means, circle back. So if I say to you now, if there's anything in this video you don't understand, circle back and watch it again. What do you think that might mean? I have a feeling you can guess it pretty well because a circle is round and anything that moves in a circle is always going to come back to the start. So to circle back to something is to return to something previously discussed. And you can use this talking about future or past. So in the past, I would say, let's circle back to that first point that Catherine made. I want to focus on, I want to drill down on the details of that point she made. So something Catherine said in the past, I want to go back to it, circle back to it. How do we use it in the future then? Well, if my team is discussing a new project that doesn't start until Wednesday, but we need to finish something by Monday and it's Monday morning now, I can say, let's circle back to that at the end of the discussion. What I want you to focus on now is today's objectives, today's plan, today's strategy. Let's circle back to that point later, right now. This is the key thing we need to focus on. Ah, yes, really good point. We'll circle back to that at the end. So you're telling someone, we will come back to that. I like that point. I like what you've said, but we don't have time for that right now because something else is a priority. So once we've discussed the priority, we will circle back to your point. And that is all for you today. I know there was something new in there for you because I do a lot of research when I look into what to say in my videos and a lot of my videos come from questions from real students. So let me know down below what was new for you. What will you add to your vocabulary? Was there anything here that you've heard multiple times but just never really understood? Or is there another vocab, another phrase that you hear all the time and I haven't gone over? As always, thank you so much for your support and for watching. Don't forget to check out my website. Absolutely no pressure to buy anything. Just go and check it out for me and let me know what you think of it. Have a fantastic week and I will see you next time. Goodbye.